this executive and finance committee meeting. Uh, Joe, would you please give the invitation? Yes, ma'am. Let's all pray. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you again for this day, this beautiful day you've given us. Thank you for help and strength. Thank you, Father, for the folks that have came to be with us today, the staff and the visitors. Thank you for the traveling grace. Father, I pray that you'll go with us through this meeting this evening. Help us do the very best we can for the people we serve. Help us make wise decisions and do those things that will make the lives and safety and welfare of our people better. Father, I pray for our young people t today that are standing in harm's way. Uh, pray, Father, that there will be an end to this conflict and that you can bring them home safely soon. I pray for our leaders of our nation, both our federal government and for our tribal government. Pray for our chair this afternoon and each member that will make good decisions for our people. Ask your forgiveness where we fail. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Roll call. Linda O'Leary. Present. Bill John Baker. Here. Bill England. Here. Jack Baker. Here. Audrey Connor. Uh-huh. Joe Crittenden. Here. Meredith Fraley. Here. John Garvin. Here. Jack Hoskins. Here. Bill Johnson. Here. Taylor King. Honey. John Keener. Jack and Bob Martin. Honey. Mary Lyman Shop Honey. David Thornton. Here. Gary Callen Watts. Honey. Phyllis Sharkey. Honey. Okay. Next will be the approval of the minutes. Oh. Second. Have a motion, have a second. All those uh, in favor of approval, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Uh, approval of minutes for the 27th approved. We have a reconvened session for May the 24th. Uh, I have a motion, do I have a second? Have a second. All those in favor? Aye. aye. All, same, all opposed, same sign. Approved. Yes, Bill Johnson. Mr. Chairman, at this time I'd like to amend the agenda to add uh, item number eight, which will be a uh, I, uh, Indian Child Welfare to apply for a $2.5 million grant with, I think, a $500,000 uh, <coughs> match over a five-year period. Second. I have a motion. have a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. The, uh, all opposed, same sign. Agenda is amended to add item eight. Uh, moving along to the financial report, Secretary Treasury report, Tamsi, uh, Kelly, how are you this afternoon? I'm fine. Good afternoon, Council. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I actually let Tamsi have a little time off, so I'll be reporting today. Um, your financial packages were sent over with the March 31st financials. Just point out a couple of uh, key things. Cash uh, for Gen Fund is up about $25 million versus this time last year, primarily due to increased revenues and um, also uh, increased earnings on our cash. Interest rates are up. <coughs> revenues are up about $58 million. Part of that is due to how we record the um, bond proceeds when we issue debt. So $30 million of that is related to the bond proceeds. Uh, dividends are up about five million, and interest is up about three million. Uh, that's my report. If you have any questions, I'll try to answer. Okay. Uh, we have any questions, of Kelly? Council? Okay. No questions. Okay, Kelly. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think David Stewart's on his way here, so we'll skip down to the <coughs> industries. Dennis. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Everybody's doing well, I hope. <laughs> yes. Um, fourth is for uh, secured ending March 31st. And on the balance sheet, we had uh, $17.5 million worth of accounts receivable, uh, net inventories of $8.5 million. Accounts payable was $12 million. Uh, the revolving line of credit was $9.8 million. And net worth at the end of March was 10.4 million. And on their revolving line of credit, I guess with this uh, CNB's uh, ownership of us or this cor new corporate thing, we're paying that. We paid that line of credit off yesterday, so that's been paid off, and and now we're going to use the funds that are available through CNB. And 
be doing that at a lower lower interest rate, but we'll be able to quit sweeping the excess funds over to earn interest to offset that, that interest cost. So it's going to be a big savings for us, I believe, not paying that 8.5% interest that we That's were paying great. on that, that before. The uh, nine months sales. Yes. Uh, sorry, Dennis. So CNB ended up doing that in the form of a loan instead of yes. a cash infusion? The plan is there will be a loan until we get all the things to the SBA and everything settled out, and then I think the cash infusion will take place like nine months down. You know, because right now we have to keep everything kind of at arm's length because of the SBA 8 day agreements uh, until we get all those on the ship. Things changed over with them. <coughs> That's the way that's been approached anyway. So, what interest rate are you paying? Uh, I think it's the arm's length federal one, it's like four and a quarter <coughs> percent, something like that. Okay, but you think in nine months it'll go away? That's my understanding that within the next nine months that will will they'll, 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 they'll be forgiven and it'll be like a get infusion at that time. Thank you. Thank you. The uh, profits through the end of March is 1.9 million, and then uh, this year, as a part of uh, of that changeover, we're also going to be extending our year 15 months to for our year end will coincide with all the other tribal entities of September the 30th. So this year we'll have a 15 month year. I will still report, you know, as a, as a 12 month and then a short three months within our system, but our year will officially end on September the 30th. And another kind of stuff, they, uh, we're working with the other entities, SAS 112, where we're deeply developing uh, internal control processes and uh, some of the uh, documentation that goes along with that internal report, doing internal audits and that type of control. And that concludes my report. Council have any questions? Council have any questions again? No? Thank you so much for your report. Thank you. Uh, Historical <coughs> Society? Kerry? Uh -huh. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Appreciate y'all giving me a chance to, to talk. I'm a little bit uh, frazzled today. Uh, opening night for uh, Under the Cherokee Moon is tonight, so uh, we've been sort of running ragged all week. But um, we're excited about it and do want to encourage all of y'all. I, I know y'all have got some things going on tonight, but I uh, want to encourage all of y'all to come out um, as soon as you can, and we'll work out the uh, reservation arrangements. Just let us know when you want to come. So. Uh, the uh, other big thing, the Trail Tears Art Show just came down. Um, I was real pleased with the quality of the artwork and uh, sales were very positive, so I felt good about that. The other big event that's coming up that I really want to uh, make sure y'all are aware of and help talk up among uh, your constituents and stuff is uh, June 30th, we'll be celebrating our 40th anniversary at the Heritage Center. The ancient village opened in uh, 1967. We've been interpreting uh, Cherokee culture for 40 years now. So we're real proud of that and we're having a special day and we want all the former villagers and their families to come out for a hog fry that day and we're okay. expecting a good crowd. And along with that we've got a summer exhibit up with some very interesting photographs of the old days and uh, some old friends so I encourage you to come out and see it. Um, Another big thing that we're uh, working on uh, at the uh, Heritage Center is we're starting to look at some long-range plans, uh, and I wanted to thank the Cherokee Nation for uh, helping us facilitate a meeting last month that we were pretty excited about the progress towards it, so we'll be letting y'all know a little bit more about that in the near future. Um, those are sort of the big things that are happening right now, and I'll be glad to answer any questions y'all have. Sounds exciting. It's exciting, but it's That's great. Be looking forward to it, Carrie. Thank, Thank you so much. Uh, next is Cherokee Nation Business, Mr. Brad Carson. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Council. It's nice to see you all. I apologize for missing your uh, larger Council meeting last month. It would have been my first, but I was called away on some other uh, responsibilities. Nice to see Councilwoman Shopout as well. Uh -huh. Not here last month. 
Um, I'm 45 days into this position today, so I thought I'd give you a brief update on some of the projects we're working on, and I, of course, would be happy to answer any questions you might have. We continue to work closely with the various companies that CNB is responsible for under the um, resolutions passed by this council and our own operating agreement, working closely with CNE as they continue their ambitious growth, working also with CNI. As Dennis mentioned, we recently closed a loan for $15 million that had been budgeted that we anticipate will help CNI immensely in its financial performance. Also with companies like Cherokee CRC that in the last six months has had revenues of about $1.1 million with an operating profit of 16%. Um, continue to work also to expand our presence in the 8A market. CNI has a lot of expertise in this rather technical part of the um, intersection of business and government, but we want to make sure that that program expands, develops more, trying to have better coordination with CNI, which with Dennis and Brian's help we've been able to attain and get the Cherokee Nation more involved in the 8A work and other forms of government contracting and other forms of diversity contracting with the private sector, which relies on some of those same programs and certifications. And also making sure that CNB focuses, while working with the nation itself, on more economic development activities, how we can recruit, bring jobs here, not necessarily ones that we would own ourselves, but that we can promote economic development in the communities. One last note about Cherokee Connects. I know a long-standing concern of the council. As I mentioned last month, we do anticipate final payment from um, our former partners in that project on July 31st. And we have every expectation that that payment of $1.55 million will be forthcoming. And that will um, end our involvement in that particular project. So I'd be happy to answer questions. If anyone if they have them. Excuse me. Did you say July 1st or 31st? 31st. 31st. Okay. Council have any questions? Mr. Carson? Thank well, you so thank much. You. Uh, Diane Hammonds? Oh, okay. Good afternoon, Diane. Good afternoon. Um, as to the GG investigation, as um, we talked about last month, there's very little that I can say publicly other than the criminal investigation is ongoing. Um, the only thing I would add that in the, in the past month, uh, even though this has been going on for some time, we have had some um, developments and there's new activity going on in the investigation. So it is very much alive and continues. Uh, Meredith? Uh, Diane, you report on this in the Rules Committee rather than having the I could. I don't know who proposed that. It be reported on in the NF. We all mind if she reports on it in the rules so she did not have to come two days in a row. Is that a problem, Diane? It's completely up to the will of the body. This okay. this is the reason that I stay for executive and finance. That's the reason I come to this. As you know, I'm always at rules. So if they were on separate days or weren't adjacent, it certainly would be more convenient for me to only go to rules. But I serve you. I'll do whatever your, the will of the body is. We want this on a monthly reporting, apparently, don't we? I'll do that in the rules. Second. I have a motion. I have a second. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed, same sign. <coughs> we'll accommodate you move you to rules. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Community assistance. Uh, oh. oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yes, I'm sorry, David. We're not very late. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize for being late. Uh, we usually run here a little late, but we're all time today, so we're not used to that. Anyway, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, good results for the month, as our financials uh, present. Uh, we expect we're about $10 million ahead of budget, and we would expect that uh, amount to hold. Uh, we'll try to keep up the pace, but it might be difficult as we run into the rest of the year, but I think we'll hold that $10 million. Uh, we just purchased 700 games. Uh, it was about a $16 million purchase, and if you remember uh, the way we, uh, we're leasing those games currently, and we give a portion of that to our vendor, the owner of the game. Mm -hmm. And so uh, based on the results of the games, we purchased about 700 of those. So instead of paying the vendor now, we will own those and keep those profits for ourselves. So it's a, it's a good investment for us. Uh, we will probably buy more games as they prove to be 
we don't buy them until we know they're good games. So uh, that's going to be uh, have a, a, a positive impact on the bottom line as we go forward. Uh, the projects are going well. Uh, the parking garage is going to open in June, uh, so they're fast and furious to get that project done. And of course, the others are all uh, in the middle of things. Uh, Roland, we've put somewhat on hold because we feel like the money that we were spending for the infrastructure in the existing building was going to be so great and we still wouldn't get what we needed. So we're thinking about a new facility right behind it, still on trust land and just had a new building uh, versus improving the old one. So if you remember, that was, a, I think, a sewing machine factory or something before, and it's just not, you know, the infrastructure uh, in terms of the heat and air and the cooling and the smoke ventilation is just uh, not very good. So uh, rather than spend a lot of money fixing it, we might be better off to just put a new facility in. So we're looking at that, and we will present it to our board. We think we can do it within the same amount of budget that we had originally. So that's something uh, we're still trying to figure out. We did, we're starting the construction on, on Catoosa, rerouting the road to the south end. Uh, once we get that road built, then we'll be able to take that section over for construction, uh, and that's in the middle of design. So that project is moving along. So I'd be happy to answer. We have a lot going on. I'd be happy to answer questions. Don and then number nine. Uh, I had a call about the casino on the summer side. Mm -hmm. Those big trucks sitting out front up there. It's kind of nice over there. It, it is. Um, and of course, we're looking at, we have Speedies also that we're getting ready to demolish. Uh, that's going to go down probably in the next 30 to 45 days there at Catoosa. Along with, we can't, we can't do anything about Mayberry <laughs> for a bit, but we're also looking at that property to just. I, was about so, so. I know. That's in the same kind of mode. What do we do with these properties when we buy them? Uh, more than likely, we will either use that for uh, satellite storage and facility and then clean up the parking lot and make it uh, sway into the existing parking uh, and then get rid of all those trucks or just demolish it. So we're right. We're trying to figure that out. Are those trucks Oh, some of them are. Some of them are. Uh, I think most of them are. It's just they're just parking there. Yeah. And then on that same truck issue in Catoosa, what we're going to do is block out all the trucks from the uh, south side and move them over to one of the north parking lots so we won't have that eyesore there. So we're going to have to make some drive-in changes into that parking lot before we can do it. We get a lot of business from those trucks in Catoosa, so before we just say, you know, don't come in, we're going to reroute them. So we're going to look at that. I, I would say we're probably 60 to 90 days out from getting something done. Melvina. Oh, I was just going to ask the, the machines that you bought. Uh, what's the life of the machine? I mean, they're not like computers. They're not obsolete. No, what happens is it's, well, the, the core uh, machine is a computer, but what you do is you just change the chip. Yeah. So it's really good. that, And then the box essentially stays the same. Uh, so you, you just change the chip, and that changes the video to another game. You can do that for you know two or three thousand dollars, right? So it's really a good deal. We don't buy the games unless we get them paid off in a very short period of time. So we've looked at all of those issues. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Phyllis. Thank you, Manager. I think everyone will come see the email message to all the council members and to Chief Smith and to. Thank you, Chief Grayson. I just wondered if you've seen it. In this, this I'm usually the last one to see it. <laughs> <laughs> we discussed it at the board meeting. We did. Oh, oh yes. Sorry. Okay. Right. Yeah, we're looking into that. Okay. Yeah, we're right in the middle of it. That care brought at that point. So we're we're looking at, at the situation. Okay. you like this back? Or, I, I have a copy of it. I will have it. Okay. A lot of responses to it as well. Okay. It's hard to yeah, there are, of course, uh, on all these issues, there are always two sides of the coin. And so uh, we look into every one of those and spend a lot of amount of time looking at it and make sure that we make the right decision and uh, everything's right. So. Mr. Johnson? Uh, hey, you have any update on the Ramona property? The Ramona property. I think my counsel is here. That's a trust issue and is in the hands of uh, real estate here at the tribe. Uh, but we have essentially agreed on the business aspects of it, and now it has to be approved by the Bureau. And so that has to be handled by the tribe, by the tribe's trust office. That's really out of our hands. 
Now, would that be a combination travel plaza and casino? Well, I, I don't. It, we haven't decided yet. Right now, it's just a casino. Just a casino, just a casino that will have an extended parking lot that will facilitate the trucks. Because all those trucks. Oh, I know. I know. And it, it, it really is a great property, but it's cumbersome because we have to get the Bureau to approve it and so on and so forth. So we're waiting. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Council, have other questions or comments? Uh, David, you may not know, but you know in our area, District 5, uh, around the lake area, I believe the uh, Seneca Cayugas mm -hmm. was coming down and supposedly, allegedly going to put in a casino there. Right. And I'm hearing so many things and people's asking me, and I know it's not a Cherokee issue, but it is as far as keeping up with what's coming in the area at, near and in Cherokee Nation. Uh, do, you, do you know anything about that? Well, what I do, and of course... Uh, I don't have solid facts, but I'll tell you what I've heard and what I understand is that that land is actually not in trust. And so uh, what, essentially what they've done is buy property and then basically said we can do anything we want to with it and we're going to put a casino on it, which uh, we would uh, disagree with that approach. Uh, we feel it's contrary to some of the trust provisions. So... Uh, I think they'll have a tough time doing that, but if they go ahead and do it, it would take some interference from some agency to stop it. I understand. Which would be out of our control, but we would have to try to deal with that since it's in territory. Right. Okay. No bother. Well, they, said they still have to deal with not only the uh, federal and in trust, and they've got the Corps of Engineers and all those people to deal with, deal with flush, right. because there's... I mean, it's not a done deal. They've got a lot of people to deal with. Well, you know? yeah, if they choose to deal with them. I mean, a lot yeah. of times yeah. they feel like they don't have to deal with anybody and go ahead and do something. So that is an approach that might be taken. Be, uh, of course, out of our control. Thank you. Yes. Could I just add a quick note? Sure. Uh, we were approached by uh, one or two members of the council on that issue on the Seneca Cayuga item. We've confirmed it's outside our jurisdiction. But it is in fee, so um, it would be up to state authorities to close that down if they start gaming on it. So. Thank you. Uh, council, have any other questions, comments for Mr. Stewart? No? Thank you, David. Yeah, thank you. Thank have you. a good weekend. Okay. Moving along to community assistance. Doug? No. There were several on your report this month um, that was sent to you. I've only got uh, two in addition to that. Uh, one of them is Yarchi, $1,380 for uh, fire truck repair for Roland Fire Department. And uh, $500 Mr. Thornton for a uh, softball team national tournament. Uh, yes. Uh, I think Mr. Thornton and I are going to divide that 502 Oh, okay. All right. Any others? Uh, Kelly. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I just wanted to make a short little announcement regarding these community assistance. We get the W-9s and you know, we're getting all the paperwork. One of my concerns is a lot of times the W-9 will have an individual social security number on there. And I just want to make sure when you're visiting with these individuals, you know, they understand that if they give us a social security number, they're probably going to end up with a 1099 at the end of the year. Um, it's much better if they can give us a federal ID number of a nonprofit organization rather than having the check made out to an individual. Um, just something to be aware of as you're talking with people because we get a lot of calls at the end of the year, people wanting to know why they've got a 1099, and that's usually the reason. That's over 600. You're right, if it's over 600. I have one on my desk right now, which is what made me think of it. Okay, thank you. Good point. Uh, yes, oh, Chair. Okay. Have a motion, have a second. All those in favor? Uh, all opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Uh, moving on to law enforcement requests. 
the list of law enforcement wasn't uh, wasn't that extensive, so uh, I'll just go through it if you, if you like. Uh, Corey County Sheriff has two thousand three hundred seventy-one dollars each. Mr. Thornton, Mr. Yargy for equipment. City of Stillwell, sixty-five hundred dollars. Mr. Cridlin for computers and duty flashlights. Adair County Sheriff's Office, $8,343. Mr. Crittenden for patrol car assistance and purchasing. City of Westville, Mr. Crittenden, $6,500 for building renovation assistance. Craig County Sheriff's Office, Mr. Hoskin, $5,000 for communication tire at the courthouse. Mrs. Fraley, $10,000 prior police department <coughs> bulletproof vest um, for the special operations team. Uh, also, Ms. Fraley, town of Strang, $1,103 taser gun and cartridges. <coughs> and then there's one to be added to your report that wasn't on there, which is Babinaw Police Department, Mr. Keener, $3,679 for equipment. Uh, do you have, uh, what was that last request? County Spamble. County Spamble. Can you repeat that for uh, Gail? Uh, from Mr. Johnny Keener. Johnny Keener for equipment. Uh huh. 3,679. I'll put the pipework in your chair, Gail. Oh, okay. Do I have a motion? motion. For approval? Second. Have a motion, have a second. All those uh, in favor? Aye. All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Okay. Thank you. And uh, let's see, old business. Madam uh, Chairman. Yes. I believe we chewed on on that path long enough. I'm gonna move that we uh, remove it from the old business. I have a motion for removal. Removal. Have a second. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries to remove the CNI order. We've already done it. Uh, moving on to new business. And this will be the motor fuels road projects. Okay. Motor fuel fund road projects. <coughs> Mr. Crittenden and Mr. Martin are splitting. $16,123 each on a Brown Store Road project. They're also contributing to a Cantrail slash Goat Hill Road project for $15,753 each, as well as both of them are contributing to the Star Killer Hollow Road project for $28,730 each. Those projects for motor fuel tax will deplete Mr. Critton and Mr. Martin's fund balance. Mr. Hoskin has three projects, Little Cabin Low Water 1 and 2 road projects for 2291 and 9247 respectively, and Possum Bridge Low Water Project $8,694. Motor Vehicle Tax Road Projects for this month, Mr. Crittenden and Mr. Martin are both contributing $36,180 for the River Road Project. And that will deplete your motor vehicle allocation. Mr. Hoskin is contributing earmarking $34,571 for the County Road East 02 North 412 West of No 408 project for that road. Um, and that will deplete Mr. Hoskin motor vehicle fund balance. The bridge funding has several projects this month, uh, which is which is a little unusual. But uh, Mr. Baker, Ms. Connor are both contributing $3,000 each to the Alberti Bridge. Also, they're both contributing $3,000 each to the Kirkpatrick Low Water Slab Bridge. Mr. Anglin, Mr. Johnson are both contributing $30,000 each to this ferry drainage project. And I 
believe. Yes, that will deplete your your brief balance. Mr. Baker, Ms. Connor, both contributing $2,984 to Mecklemore Hollow project. Mr. Crittenden, Mr. Martin, both contributing $6,090 to the Brown Store Road. Is that a bridge? Brown Store Road, there's, I guess there's a bridge in there or access, maybe an access Is that in uh, project. Adair? That's in Adair County. Okay. It may be an access project. They didn't identify it as a bridge, but... Um, Which one of the commissioners is that? That I don't know. I, I don't actually see... Yeah, the, no, no way. Brown Store? The Brown Store Road would be north of the Chance. Yeah, right. Be north of the Chance. Yeah. Two miles all the way back. Kendall. He had two, two, two different projects up here. Okay. I'm sure it's I'm sure it's appropriate. Yeah. Um, when this these projects come over from Mr. Lynn's office, there they've already done their their process of verifying. They need to go inside the paperwork. It, uh, but I, I'm not, I, I wasn't trying to raise the issue with that project. No, no, no I, I, just for clarity. Cantrell Go Hill project, Mr. Crittenden and Mr. Martin, six thousand nine hundred fifty-five dollars each. That same amount, they're both contributing to the Stark Hill Hollow project. For bridge and access. Ms. Frazee is contributing $11,605 to Wolf Creek Bridge. And Mr. Hoskin, $10,787, Little Cabin Low Water Number One, <coughs> as well as the Panther Creek Bridge for $19,213. And Mr. Hoskin, your bridge allocation is depleted. With these requests, Mr. Crittenden, Mr. Martin, you both have $10,000 each. And Mr. Baker and Ms. Connor have $21,016 each left. And that completes the bridge and access provision. Motion to approve, Madam Chair. Second. Have a motion, have a second. All those in favor? Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Uh, Okay, and item two, isn't it, under new business? The Mural Home Living History Program. Who's going to present that? Madam Chairman. Yes. The, in the last two weeks or so, the uh, uh, there's been quite a bit in the paper, and I visited with the uh, curator at the Mural Home, and I think she had talked to to Mr. Baker and maybe Ms. Watt and she had talked to education <coughs> to, to see if they could find any money and uh, education says well you know we've got our money's already allocated and uh, you know we'd have to rob Peter to pay Paul but they see just hundreds of people out here and it's a living history uh, at the at the Merle Hall, and she she said for she could run all of her summer programs and into the fall for all the school kid kids for like sixty seven hundred twenty three dollars. And I want to move that we fund the living history at the Merle Hall for sixty seven hundred twenty three dollars for all the programs that are in your package. Okay, we have a motion. We have a second discussion. All those in favor? Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. <laughs> Sixty-seven. Are you wanting it now? Six thousand seven hundred twenty-three dollars. Okay. Okay. Uh, contract health funding. Madam Chair. Yes. In the health committee, we discussed this and approved moving this to our second finance committee. An additional two point five million for contract payout, which is two million to be used for. Items of expanded excuse me, ophthalmology services, orthopedics, back and neck pain, diagnostic, diagnostic testing, and emergency room call ins, with an additional two hundred fifty thousand for eyeglasses and another two hundred fifty thousand for dental things. So I move that. Second. We this. Have a motion for approval of the um, 
uh, 2.5 million. Is, is that the, the cash match of the $500? Okay. Lost my page. Okay. 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 <coughs> motion. Have a second. Discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. <coughs> Yes, uh, Madam Chairman, uh, this is a legislative act uh, for funding eyeglasses and other corrective lenses for the elderly citizens and youth of the Cherokee Nation. Uh, on the 2.5, I bumped it up to, to help fund this, knowing it was coming. And uh, pretty much what, what it says is that if they meet the income guidelines uh, of 185% of poverty, that uh, we'll pay, uh, I believe it's $250, up to $250 per, per person. And what, what's been happening is our elders will go in and they'll say, yes, uh, you know, we furnish eyeglasses, but it, it's the, it was the bare minimum, and they were many times having to pay two and $250 out of their own pocket. And uh, when we got to discovering, if they needed bifocals, that wasn't covered. Trifocals wasn't covered. And uh, they could get a basic pair of reading glasses. And we do pay for it. But I'd like to bump that amount up so that they, we pay up to $250 for all of our qualified citizens. Have a motion? I put it in the form of a motion. Have a second? Second. Okay. Discussion? Thank you, Madam Chair. It's Dr. Jim, could you come forward and talk about the details on because I assume you had an opportunity to do some analysis maybe. <coughs> analysis may be a little strong word, but but, okay. but, I, but I've looked at it. Um, it's been a couple of health committees ago. I can't remember if it was, I think it was Chuck that actually brought up the issue to us that because at one point there was not any free glasses offered. There was there was a copay associated with it. And we went back, thanks to you all, and have corrected that now. So if you do make less than 185% of poverty, we will cover a basic bifocal. And that's running about $100. Um, the things that we don't cover, though, are if you want the no line both bifocals or if you want the shaded, tinted type bifocals. Um, and the reason being is we consider that more of a cosmetic um, yeah, it's versus a, a true medical necessity. My doctor said it would save my eyes having the lenses that would get darker when I go out in the sun. Well, you know, they not, not to sound cheap, but to be cheap. They have these little clip-ons that we, we give people just to put over their regular glasses that convert them then into sunglasses. I can be cheap, <laughs> but we try. I mean, really, we try to you know extend the money as far as we can to get as many people paid for as we can. Um, yes. I'll be taking forever. But uh, if they're diabetic, do they get? Additional help, or is it still part of that? It's still part of that. If they're diabetic, they automatically fall into the program. Oh, okay. And so, mm -hmm. our guidelines are you have to be either diabetic, under 18, mm -hmm. a full time college student, or over 65. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, if we pass this up to $250, what could you do different? Honestly, my concern, I mean, $250, especially for a basic pair of glasses, is pretty expensive. I mean, I can go buy a... No, I'm sorry. It, it's up to... You can do the 150 but what what could the, the folks get that they're not getting now if you were able to go up to $250? They'd get designer frames. Especially if you're looking at single... I mean, just a single vision correction, not a bifocal. Like for $250, I could get a cop, I could get a name brand Ralph Lauren kind of frame. That's correct. Um, you know, I got I got glasses at at 
Salina. This has been several years ago, and and cost at that point, I, mean, I paid like forty dollars for it. But it was just a single vision plain glasses. I mean, it wasn't anything. Well, maybe I'm the only one here, but I don't think so. Uh, do you others not hear of it being one of the major complaints of their elders? It is for uh, When you go out to the community that uh, they had to pay $200 or, or 250 on top of what we did for them. And, uh, and I mean, there was a little man out here a while ago that his glasses are taped up and had been for five years because he couldn't, he, he had come with $250 last time. And he can, he he doesn't have it, so he was he'll tape them up rather than than go to the doctor and uh, and have to to come out of his pocket for uh, for lenses. I mean, he should be able to get to get a basic pair of bifocals for free, and I don't know if that's I don't know why. I mean, his no, and, and I'm not opposed to to letting our youth. Look at a little nicer pair of, of glasses for self-esteem purposes, if nothing else. They're, they're catching enough heat by being called four eyes and this, that, and the other. Uh, without, I mean, what, what would be the crime in having a little nicer lens uh, from or frame to, to choose from? Uh, the the 13-year-old girl that is going to have to wear glasses, and uh, I mean, what? I mean, we carried over $32 million last year. And uh, seeing, I mean, they do better in school, self-esteem, the elders can read and take care of themselves longer. I mean, there's, there's all kinds of reasons why we want to help with eyeglasses. And, uh, and there's a stigma out there that our elders will not use us because we, it costs it. I've, had, I've been told that they can go to iMart and get glasses cheaper than their copay at, at Cherokee Nation. They said we can get two of them at at, uh, at iMart and uh, for less money than what we had to pay for one. And, and I just I just think that we ought to, to build it up and give you the option of up to two hundred and fifty dollars. And if you can do it for a hundred, then you'll just do it for a hundred. But the option to to help these elders and these kids. Just knowing human nature, I think if somebody tells me I can have this versus this, most people are probably going to go with the most expensive, whether they really need it or not. I mean, my kids, I have to go to the store and say, you can only get the $10 thing, otherwise they'd be wanting the $40 thing. Yeah. And and a comment that I, I had a call for and, and I'll carry your next. Uh, I had a call from an elderly lady that is waiting to get glasses because she's been told that they're out of money. And uh, and at the same time she's not able to read as good as she thinks she could if she had the new pair of glasses. So we get those calls. But then yet I know this isn't uh, 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 a problem that you can handle immediately, but then we have all this money in carryover, and we've got the money. It's not like we don't have the money, you know, to provide for services for our people, especially in this area. We, uh, you know, it's just so important. Uh, Tara, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I had a couple questions. I thought with the legislation we just passed that that remedied the low-income elders and those kind of folks from having to pay it, it did, but again, it's for the basic, you know, for basic, but oh, it, it does eliminate I people. assume as a government we only provide basic necessities. I didn't know we were in the business. So, yes, so it eliminates the copay, and, and that was something I think that you all had brought up as a council, and we fixed that, because that, that needs to change. Okay, so we fixed that. So they can go in and they can get them at no cost if they meet those income guidelines and such or are not many. That's correct. Okay, well then I'm satisfied on that. Thank you. Okay. Nice. Call for the question. Okay. I have a call for the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Same sign. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Is this on the actual by acclamation? By acclamation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, <coughs> Madam 
Madam Chairman, item, item number five, Legislative Act providing scholarships for Pell Grant qualified students. Uh, it has come to our attention over the last several years that uh, we used to fund the Pell eligible students. I, I know 750, but I'm thinking it used to be a thousand. Went to 750, then it went to 500, and uh, then it got as low as I think $240. Uh, this is a federal program that uh, that we administer. Uh, that used to be the the old uh, higher ed money of the BIA. And what happened is, as more and more, as we have been successful in getting more and more of our students to go to college, the, we just had one pot of money and that was it. So the more students we got, the less each one of them got. Well, now it's to the point that we're giving them such a little amount that they're not even applying to their tribe anymore. And uh, so now we have... Uh, 800, 847 students that are in the pool and this last time they got $350 after filling out their FAFSA and, and, and all of those things. Now if you get pale, you get $1,000 from us. And I'd like to make a motion at this time that we, we pass this act with the funding amount of uh, for this year of $575,000 so that the kids can start in September and get 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 paid up front. Ten percent of that will be for administration. Uh, for five hundred and twenty-five, twenty-one thousand dollars, I think we can cover every every kid that we've got. Bring them up to uh, to the thousand dollars, and uh, and I would fully hope that we would continue it in the budget cycle to fund it for the for the second semester and go on. But uh, I'd like to to pass this act and a, a, a funding cycle with it uh, so that we can take care of this, this, this first round of kids and give the PEL eligible students the same amount that we're giving the non pale I have a motion and I have a second and discussion. Yes. Um, then it says the uh, said scholarship shall be automatically renewed for four years provided that the student remains enrolled um, in good standing. Dot, dot, dot. So, is that, uh, so are we doing 2,000 and then four more years or are we going to set it up to give them that possible fifth year like we've looked at? My, my intention was to tackle that in the funding uh, in the budget okay. process and not not fund four years in advance at this point. Okay. Uh, Kara? Um, and, and I have concerns about that because this seems like the wrong way to go about it logistically. Um, so I have two things I'm concerned about. This is a legislative act without funding that sets up in perpetuity that the budget always has to meet this. Right? Because it sets it into law, right. rather than as part of the budgeting process. We're going to ask a similar question. And then we haven't set up any funding for it. So if it were, does it apply this year? And if it applies this year, it seems like we would only be able to fund about a fourth. If they're only getting like two fifty, three hundred, then we would only and we max it up to a thousand using the existing budget. We'd fund only a fourth of the students we currently fund rather than funding all evenly. Okay, on, that, on that last question, um, the the numbers that Jennifer uh, Pigeon gave me from higher ed was um, 847 students, I believe. And to get their funding for those this semester only up to 1,000 from where they're 300-something they're at now, that's where the 521 came. M my question was the way that the act... 521,000? 500, yeah. And then 10 percent on top of that so that higher education department would have some administrative dollars <laughs> to, to handle that, that workload is what brought it up to 575. I, I'm unclear about <coughs> the other part of your first part of your question is the uh, um, is, is this an appropriations bill or does this create set policy to create the program and then the appropriation is, comes along with um, 
you know, because there wasn't funding with this particular act, just a policy. Mr. Todd can speak to that. It's my understanding the intent, and Mr. Baker can correct me, is that this is a, uh, uh, a legislative act that will obviously set the policy of the, of the, of the, of the tribe from, from here on out. In order to uh, fund the policy that is set, there will be, need to be budget modification to the appropriate budget process. Uh, but this will be the law, and if it's passed, you will need to find a way to meet that law. Uh, much the same way as the state legislature have done with teacher raises and, and et cetera. You know, they've said that we're going to be doing that. Now they're going to find the money to do that. But if you set this, this is where it's going to be. And you will, through your budget process, through your annual and your uh, monthly modifications, find a way to fund it. Like the non pay program is currently with right. more fuel funds. Right. Right. And, and I'm unclear, uh, I'm really uncomfortable actually on how logistically it would be implemented to where it continues on uh, because um, we are already, even with the requirements right now to validate students in school, meeting the requirements and those things, even with that paperwork, we're still having problems with folks withdrawing, I mean like taking money and withdrawing from school or you know, how do we know where they're at, how do they get their check, and I mean, all this other stuff. And the language doesn't seem to allow the education department to function the way they need to. It's like we're trying to mandate from here something that we're not responsible for, and I'm not very comfortable with that. And, and it is not spelled out because they already have their process. And the, they've got the process for the failed eligible. They have to do, keep their grades, they have to do this, they have to do that. The only thing that's changing is the amount of funding. They right now they're is getting... Is that language really the same? Because that seems very strong that they don't have to do anything to continue. <coughs> I mean, that's, it, does, it seems different than the process. Um, Don, uh, yes. Sure. Uh, I would think this would be to come from the Education Committee first. So I'm going to make a motion we table this and let the Education Committee right. the board on it and work on it figure it out. It really needs to come from the Education Committee. Did you have a comment, Todd? Did you have a comment? Oh, no, I was going to say that Dr. Morton is here, you know, uh, on, on that particular question. Point of order. My motion was to table, table the motion. Table on a second. It's non-debatable and it supersedes the motion on the table. I realize that. Still want to ask a question. <coughs> Thank you, Tom. Uh, we have a motion to table. We have a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Aye. 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 Um, we should be both home. Madam Chair. Yes. Uh, clarification with that uh, motion to table. There was also comment to send it to hire to the education committee. So yes. we're tabling it out of this committee, but we'll pick it up in education. Is that, is that right? right? Yes. Thank you. Bill Angler? Yes. Joe John Baker? No. Jack Baker? Yes. Arthur Connor? Yes. Joe Crittenden? No. Mary Fraley? John Garvin? Yes. Chair Koskin? No. Bill Johnson? Yes. Heather King? No. John Keener? Jake Rod Martin? Yes. Linda O'Leary? No. Levon Shophouse? No. David Thornton? No. Kara Cowan Watt? Yes. Phil Chargy? No. Eight, nay, seven, yay. Eight yay. Yes, no, seven yay, eight nay. Motion passes then. Motion carries. Fail. Fail. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Seven yay, eight. Seven yes, eight nay. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Morton? Yes, sir. Can you come up to the front, please? Not to make this too confusing, but what uh, the purpose of this is to, to empower you to fund the Pell eligible students instead of 250 or the 340 that we did this last semester to take them up to a thousand dollars a semester. <coughs> Visited about it, and uh, you've got policies and guidelines and everything. All you don't have is money. Is that correct? 
That's correct, and and the thing that makes it hard to determine is that we're talking about a moving figure. For instance, in uh, 2003, uh, we had uh, 1,000, or we had 955 applications for for pale. Uh, last year we had 847 so we have had as low as uh, oh, one year as low as about three or four hundred so we I attribute the low figure to the lack of recruitment and during this last year we saturated the 14 county area in recruiting so if you were to ask me right now how many how many Pell student applications will you have by June 15th or June 16th since postmark deadline's 15th? Um, you know, I flat couldn't tell you. But if we funded uh, the current level of students that we have for in the program and added, um, let's say, 500 then a half million dollars is not going to cover. So that's something that have to be worked out in, you know, in, in budget. There'd have to be several scenarios presented. And by the 15th of June, we will have uh, information where we could make uh, statements concerning it will cost approximately this amount of dollars. But uh, I'm my best guess estimate is that it's about 1.7 that it would take uh, if our uh, applications increase to the level that I think they will. I have a question. Uh, Phyllis, then Bill John, you're next. Um, Madam Chair, thank you. Just a comment. I, mean, <clears throat> I know that just appropriated money for, for someone to do the recruitment. So it, it's kind of like we're creating this problem having students to come and be interested in furthering their scholarship and then we're going to tell them we don't have that money or that they're going to get $250 mm -hmm. they might not be told that they're only going to get $250 and they might you know, they don't well, know what to expect when they right. come on so I think that you know, in all fairness you know, I've heard you know, other students talk about these students that don't get the thousand dollars and how when they ask when I'm, when I'm asked, this is, I'm, I'm taking somebody's comments, when I'm asked how much do I get, I'm, I'm embarrassed to tell them because I know that they only get $250. And they're yeah. embarrassed to tell me. So that just that sort of creates a, a, a discrimination, you know, without even meaning to, is that, well, I'm, I'm Pell eligible. I'm below the guidelines, and that's why I need to get That's, you know, that's... You know, that's Kind of like a red, kind of like a red card and a white card for free lunches. Yeah, so I think yeah. that you know it is a good, it is a good policy. I mean, it's, it's something that we need to do. Work on, you know, an equal service to our students. It doesn't matter what kind of background, economical background they come from. That they want to go to school. We should give them a fair chance. At least give them the same chance as other students by eliminating the. the or not eliminating even, but to assist them with the worry of the money. Because these students that get two hundred and fifty dollars have to work. And if we want them to be successful, we need to let them attend college without having to worry about having to work just to pay their tuition or buy their books because we know that two hundred and fifty dollars doesn't buy very many textbooks. It doesn't in some cases. I know I know some family members are, can only buy one with that amount of money. So, you know, I think that if this is a good good thing and I hope that we can work out all of the details to make sure that we can fund it. Well in all fairness I think I should say too that uh, one thing that I particularly like about the uh, the Bell program is that it's uh, worldwide. In other words, it extends beyond the jurisdiction of the uh, of yep, jurisdiction and yeah, and allows an opportunity to provide some uh, some assistance. And, and Dr. Morton, if your numbers and your recruitment works out as well as as you think, and we double the number of Pell eligible students 
then their funding next semester, if we do nothing, will be $171 a semester. If they double, we yeah, take the same pot of money. That's and that moving figure. It's that moving figure. And See, I'm just this saying, year it's 385 $385. And you take half of that and, and you're down to 170 Before it has been as little as 200 something. And it's just, you know, what, what would be wrong if we had, I mean, I think it would be great if we had to come up with an extra million dollars to fund this particular mandate. And we got an extra uh, thousand Pell eligible kids uh, into college and out of college, and I mean, once we get them educated, folks, they can take care of themselves. But these other programs don't mean anything, or are little little consequences. And and I mean, I just you know, when when we got down to two fifty for the tribe's help to send kids to college, it was it was embarrassing. And if this recruitment works, then it's going to be less than the two fifty. And I just I think we ought to belly up and and take. I mean, Callie just told us that uh, the dividend from CNE is a, it, to the tribe. Forget what doesn't come here is an extra five million dollars. Where can we put our money better than education? No, I, I just had a comment, an experience from uh, not getting enough culture. And I had two students, I'm a family with two kids. Well, one was going to Western Park, Oklahoma, and another was somewhere else. And, and they didn't have enough money even to come home on Thanksgiving and Christmas. And they came to me, and now I'm all confident I would help them get them back and forth. Uh, we've got more than one kid in the school. I mean, that really, you know, that gives a hardship. And another point that I think that I've uh, that adds to the factor is that, and I'm not, I'm not arguing for or against. That's your decision, not mine. Is uh, the fact that uh, federal assistance to students has dwindled over the years? It's not like it was in 1970 or 75 or or 80. And I have had uh, persons tell me that I've had parents tell me that. Uh, I really don't want to take off a day's work and come down there and fill out the form for $300, uh, which in one way sounds sounds bad, you know, but in another way, uh, I understand it. Well, Dr. Morton, in our area, oftentimes if you take off from the places that we have of employment, you're docked so many points, and that means you either have a job or you don't. And we And let's face it, we live in a society where mom and daddy and grandpa and grandma make arrangements for the child's education. People ask me, you know, why aren't those kids lined up out there? Well, I have a grandson at the University of Arkansas, and I line up for him. So. <laughs> <laughs> and and that's, that's good will for the ones who can. It truly right. is. Thank you, Dr. Martin. But, but, it, but it, I, I want to leave this impression that, uh, you know, it, Five or six years down the line, when you know, as it escalates, and as long as we realize that that escalation is uh, the success, yes, uh, because the budget will continue to rise each year. But, but what better success can we wish for our young people? Well, thank you. I'll be happy to, uh, uh, as the budget process is. Uh, Worked out, I'll be happy to provide any time assistance. Thank you. Questions been called. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Or act. Unanimous. A unanimous. Aye. By acclamation. Item 6 <coughs> uh, funding for the Cherokee Nation Cancer Registry. Second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Resolution carries. Uh, item 7 is authorizing the comprehensive budget for fiscal year 2008. The <laughs> Mod 8, wow. <laughs> quite a budget, Mod. It's quite a Mod. Madam Chairman. Yes. I'd like to move for approval, not wanting to help in discussion, and I would like to approve it. According to the recommendations in the, in the back of Mod A. Okay, I have a motion. motion. I have a second. Second. 
Okay, have a second. No discussion. Discussion? Okay, no discussion. All those in favor? No, no, no. I want oh, I want. Oh, you want to, next Doug, to go over? I it? sure want Doug to go. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> yes, go ahead and discuss. Or explain to us. Um, all of it? No. <laughs> uh, your portion in the back. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, we're going to be here a while. We're going to be over this whole thing. And first off, I want to apologize to the body for taking so long to get the review to you. Uh, I tried to get it to you within two to three days if you'd allow me, but this time I took seven. And um, I apologize for that, but I felt like any budget mod that's $22 million uh, would warrant uh, its, its due review. Um, first off, I'll give you my summary at the bottom of the report, and then I want to make a few comments pertaining to uh, some of the items I've mentioned. Um, although I didn't find any technical issues uh, surrounding the budget preparation, and I did make several comments and a few recommendations in the report, they're summarized as follows. Uh, the Marshal Service has a couple of budgets that's in here that um, the budget analysis that I had presented on page two of the report indicated uh, significant um, tracking of underspending of federal funds uh, versus tribal funds that I, I thought we might need to get a better understanding of, of what the program is doing with their, their various fund sources. The cash reserve item. Uh, Ms. Catcher has submitted this cash reserve budget to fulfill the legal requirements of Legislative Act 502. Um, although I, I do respect her desire to get in compliance with the law, in my opinion, I think that particular law needs to be revisited for good, sound fiscal policy. It's creating a cash reserve based on an entire budget authorization, which one, includes transfers between funds, and two, has no uh, moratorium or phase out associated with if we have significant reserves on our books and, and cash balance. So it can literally create an environment when we do have significant carries over of having to restrict part of that carryover. Um, just for a, a basically a, a cash reserve that was intended for a line of credit. Uh, but I would recommend the body consider that Legislative Act 502 and uh, with your permission, I've visited with Callie and I'd like to work with her on a joint effort between the branches to see how we can put together a revision of the amended 502 Act before the body next month. <coughs> the third item is the PACE building. Um, the PACE building, I just merely uh, wanted to allow the financing body, which is Cherokee Nation Businesses, to main, maintain 100% of the construction financing. That particular uh, building is around $950,000, $960,000 financing from CMB to the PACE program. It was going to require another $169,000 for to get a water and sewer line over to it. Um, we have a, uh, and the request was to utilize the government indebtedness that was issued in 2003. There are opportunities elsewhere in this budget where those loan proceeds from 2003, as they were intended to be utilized on government capital improvement projects, this is a new construction financed by CNB, which is going to have interest associated with it and a return on CNB's investment. And I think it's much cleaner if that for-profit entity of our bit of our structure maintains. Uh, all the capitalization of that project and not mixing government funds with it. That was where I was going with that recommendation because we also have a $200,000 renovation of the Saline Courthouse that the request was to use tribal discretionary funds for. And I think that that would be a more appropriate utilization of those bond proceeds or uh, of 03. The next item was the election fund. The election commission was requesting a little over a couple hundred thousand dollar budget increase due to the extra election of this year. And when I ran the analysis of their budget, um, it appeared that they were um, going to have, at this point, adequate funds in their current budget to handle the primary and the runoff. I visited with uh, uh, Rick and, and uh, Jim Cosby. Uh, 
earlier before the meeting and showed them the, the financial statements off the system, showed them where um, I was drawing my conclusions and um, asked them if, if they would have any reason why we couldn't wait a month or two to get a clearer picture from Automated Election Service on what this is we're going to cost and how are they going to come in with their actuals against their already approved budget so we don't throw you know, uh, more money out in a budget that may not actually, we, we don't even know if we're going to have to have yet. Um, not to say they're not going to need more money, but at this point, um, similar to the discussion you had earlier on, on the pale, I think it's it may be a little premature at this point on the election budget, and they both concurred with that and had no problem waiting a month or two to get a clear picture. Uh, the next item was internal lease building. Um, that was just uh, the budget that was going to use um, pulling in the $300,000 remaining uh, of uh, in debt, uh, proceeds of debt from 03. I believe the actual number is closer to a million. Is that right? So these are principal dollars of debt that have been unspent over a course of years. And as we're trying to identify appropriate capital projects to spend that, that what really is a million dollars, this particular item was to, to address that. That's why I mentioned this particular budget. And the lastly was the landfill, which I didn't have a request to. I wasn't requesting you to do anything with their budget request. They're trying to send money over to the election, uh, excuse me, Environmental Protection Commission for regulatory activities. I just had some question regarding how the business arrangement with that contract is set up and utilizing tribal employees. Um, and now, for my other comment, I wanted to give before. The, to wrap this up, several times in instances where I'm reviewing these budgets, um, I'm reviewing based on limited knowledge. And I'm also reviewing based on information that's given to me. Kelly and I had a, had a really um, enlightening discussion earlier today about the administration's budget process and how they come to a decision of what to present to this body for, for appropriations. Um, I, would, I would like for this body and the administration to consider the possibility of, of possibly including me on the front end work of the, the strategic budget committee and administration, not as a voting member on that committee, but simply to gain an understanding of some of this information that may have more behind the scene information I can't see in the system or in this information, and I may not even know who to go to to go try to find information I don't know is there. So it might enable us to... Uh, but my goal is eventually to keep continuing to put better packages before the body to where when you make an informed decision, you're making an informed decision on all the information available to you, and which is what was available to me. And hopefully going, on, going forward in the future, we can get to that point. Um, I would very much uh, like to get there. That, that sounds great to me. Kelly, is that? I, I think that would... Um what we do in the Strategic Budget Committee is we talk about all these proposals from the programs. We get as much information as we can and try to make the best decision on what to request in the budget bond. I think uh, if Doug can sit in on those discussions, he will have a better understanding of, of the process but also the justifications that we're going over when we review all of these. So. Um, I would think that maybe once a month when the group has a set of proposals, uh, I can coordinate and ask Doug to come to the meeting. So. That'd be wonderful. Okay. Oh, that'd be very helpful. Uh, Madam Chair, if I could, I'd just like to um, address a few of these items on the summary. Uh, the Marshal Service, Doug and I, this is one of those situations where maybe he didn't have... Maybe he didn't have as complete of information as what the group's been looking at. Um, the request that's before you is a specific project that is a pilot project on a meth prevention project. Uh, it was funded in the 07 budget for six months. The group crosses several functions. It's behavioral health, um, Indian child welfare, and the Marshal Service. The reason the Strategic Budget Committee only funded it for half a year was they had a very rigorous report back process 
where this, this cross-functional group was re- required to bring back information to show that they were being affected. Uh, we have already approved, I think, the behavioral health and the ICW increase for the second half of the year. That's what this Marshall Service request is for, is for the specific project. The other question on that budget related to the NAHASDA underutilization, if you will. We had a, an audit uh, by NAHASDA um, a year or so ago, and one of the issues that came out of that audit was how we document the time on Marshall Service and what qualifies as an activity that can be charged to NAHASDA. Uh, we have gone through a rigorous pro- process with the Marshall Service, with Don Vaughn's office. The uh, patrol, when they're out on patrol, they have to actually document if they're close to uh, a NAHASDA house. So we can't just say, okay, you've got X amount of dollars to spend. You have to, to really be rigorous, and, and James is here to give you kind of some details on, on what they do on their side. So what is in the budget mod right now before you? It's about the same of money, amount of money requested out of NAHASDA, but rather than being for salaries and wages, a big piece of that is to request some special equipment that the Marshal Service will be able to utilize. You want to talk about the equipment, Jim? Sure. Um, one thing that we're requesting, oh, thank you, uh, Council. <laughs> Uh, one thing that we're requesting is a, uh, right now we have a uh, system, our storage system uh, is an electronic. We have a paper filing system. We go back to 2002. Uh, we've boxed up our records before then. They're in a warehouse somewhere. We don't have a storage system um, that allows us to have updated, or actually just to store our reports. Um, what we're requesting is a, it's called a data 911 system. And that will allow not only us to have an electronic storage system, it will also give our officers the capability of being able to send reports. Because right now, say if they're in Delaware County, Mays County, or Ada County, they got to drive all the way to the office here in Tahlequah to type up their reports. It takes them out of the communities, takes them away from what they're doing. Um, just so they can come down here, write their reports, um, write, get a case number, and, and uh, submit that report. Then that head report has to be uh, reviewed by the uh, supervisor. Um, sometimes it's the next supervisor at home because our supervisor may be in another county also. This will allow it to all be uh, consolidated in one place. It will also have the capability of having uh, in-car video, which we don't have in any of our cars. Obviously, we have one for in our canine vehicle. Um, and it will allow us to have GPS capability to know where those officers are. If we if we ping the system, they'll be able to locate them in the 14 county area. Um, and we don't have that now. No, we don't have that now. Right now. Um, and um, I believe there's those are the major components of that system. Um, we looked at just having the ability to have laptops. Laptops aren't built for that type of uh, environment of the temperatures, you know, getting hot and cold and, and the roads, some of the roads we go down are would be hard on the laptop. Um, the uh, getting back to the Nahasda and the Nahasda spending anything outside of a housing site uh, or civil processes uh, supporting the uh, juvenile drug court where we're transporting these kids, picking them up, uh, going and doing urinalysis with them. Um, none of that can be charged in the HASDA. Uh, travel calls can't be charged in the HASDA. Uh, CNE calls can't be charged in the HASDA. Those, the, the HASDA is actual t- actual time you're spent in a housing site or going to a housing site. Um, anything outside of that, what we do is um, it's like kind of like hitting a time clock on those chess games. Um, when you're doing something else, you go off off of that clock and you go back to doing it. You hit it and and you just count your time that way. It works well for our uh, patrolman. Doesn't work too well for our investigators or our, or our uh, supervisor, our admin, because you know we're, we can't choose to go to a housing site to do our job. We have to do our job here in Tahlequah, so that's going to be DOI. So it's either DOI, NAHASDA, or uh, uh, travel funds. The grants that we had, the meth grant and the 
domestic violence grant are running out this year and then on um, the next fiscal year. Thank you for informing us. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Um, Madam Chair, if I could continue. On the cash reserve, I don't disagree with Doug at all that we need to revisit Legislative Act 0502. Um, I brought this budget forward when I realized that we were out of compliance with the 1.75% reserve requirement. Um, as long as we all acknowledge that we are out of compliance, we realize that, and we're going to work on it, I don't, I don't have an issue. Um, on the PACE building, that particular project was brought to CNB. We reviewed it. Uh, obviously, CNB is a for-profit business. We structured it with a lease back to the PACE program to be as cheap as we basically could do it. Um, it was based on 960,000 capital costs, leasing it back to PACE for about 833 a square foot, which was below market uh, for the program. It was a win-win for both sides. When uh, Rick Richards came to us with the problem with the water and sewer, um, there were two options. One, to go back to CNB's board, which we could do, and request additional funding on the project, which will increase the cost to the PACE program. Because the building is located um, near the Marcoma property, we discussed it. These improvements to that land for the water and sewer I saw as a positive for that area in terms of future development. That's why I recommended paying for it out of the 2003 bond proceeds. The land is owned by Cherokee Nation. The improvements would be owned by Cherokee Nation. The building itself is still online to come in at budget and uh, Rick Richards has done a great job of managing that project for us. Um, that was the main reason for requesting it out of the bond proceeds rather than going back to CNB was to keep that project at a lower cost and not have to increase the, uh, the lease expense to the PACE program. Uh, the election fund, I think Doug visited with uh, a couple of the commissioners. Um, we want to make sure we don't hamstring the election commission. They, are, they have three elections this year instead of one. But as long as they're okay with that, we're fine. Um, the internal lease buildings, um, I don't have an issue with putting some of those bond proceeds towards the um, Saline Courthouse, rebuilding that spring house, uh, so we could re-change uh, from requesting GEN fund to requesting bond proceeds. And then the last item on the landfill, I guess Doug's question was regarding um, leaving the employees as Cherokee Nation employees when we did the third party contract. Um, that was done primarily to benefit the employees so that they would be able to keep their Cherokee Nation benefits. When you go to a, a different company, a lot of times you lose and don't have as good of benefits. And when we were negotiating all this with ICI, we wanted to make sure those employees' benefits were protected. ICI reimburses the nation for those salaries and benefits for the contract. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Doug, would you like to continue on this? Did you have any anything else to add to this? I, I don't have any, anything to add. Um, did we speak to the landfill? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yes. All right. Um, um, on this mod, out of three on your agenda, the 2.5 million for contract tail, um, was that to be? I, I never saw that act or that fund, the actual legis the appropriations bill. Am I to add that to mod eight? Okay. And the, the $6,723 mural home will be added to Mod 8 as a donation? Correct. Um, okay. And the 575. And the 575 on the pail that probably will need to be adjusted in a month or two. That's right. Uh -huh. Okay. That's a perfect item that should probably be considered a, a standing funding um, item in your in your budget hearings exactly. in August and September of each year just simply because of the timing that Mr. Morton brought up with his applicants 
we'll know what we're looking at. Yes, in that. That's what we hope for. Okay. Yes. Call for the question. Call for the question. All righty. Um, all those in favor of passage? Aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. My explanation. Okay. Item eight. New business. This is that. Move for approval. Have motion. Have a second. Discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm opposed. Same sign. Motion carries. Yes. Uh, one announce the next meeting date for the 29th at 3 p.m., be June uh, 29th instead of the 28th. And we have a motion to adjourn. I have a second. All those in favor? Aye. We are so adjourned. Huh? No, I... <laughs>